Hi, welcome to Charlotte's Unnatural. I'm Charlotte, and this is our um, ver new version of Schoolhouse. Because of the situation, we just decided that we don't want everybody crowding around a table like we normally do at Schoolhouse to do our little demonstration. So we're trying to capture that for you today on video. And um, we decided um, that we were getting pretty excited about this technique, uh, Laura Jaime, from Fiberworks has been um, putting out more and more patterns um, for her collage work. She um, is well known now for doing collage work. There are patterns available. There is also a Laura's Little Book of Collage. So if you really are just interested in the technique, this is a good one. She talks about how to just select a simple pattern, how to select fabric motifs, um, how to apply it to the background fabric, how to choose a background fabric. So we're just gonna touch on a little bit of that today. But basically, our special for the day, if you've done Schoolhouse before, you know that we always have something, a special item that's discounted. And that is this new mat. It's the Fusa mat from Precision. Um, and it is uh, clear, you can see through it. You can see I have the pattern, a pattern behind it. And you can iron right on this mat. However, the real beauty of this is that it comes with a, um, it comes with a second piece which you actually build your um, fabric on and then you put this on top so you're protecting your iron from the fabric that has the fusible, fusible web on it. So basically this uses um, fabric, fusible web, and we are suggesting that this is a great um, product if you're going to do very much of this. So while, um, while we started getting excited about this, each of the um, of the <laughs> gals got even more excited about it and they each ended up picking a, um, a project to do. So Robin um, is in the beginnings of this and you want to tell us how you did this, Robin, what you did here? Well, on the butterfly, they suggest you have a color on the top and on the bottom. I couldn't decide on a color, so I did the um, ombre. ombre. So that's how I did that. But on this pattern, it says you're supposed to cut out your background and stuck it in. Uh, I'm doing a collage like thing. Went through my stash, went through a friend's stash, bought some stuff here, and I'm just going to make it work. But that's the fun of it. You get to pick your own background. You can pick the colors you like. You can put 50 of them in there. You can put four of them in there. Let me get a better shot of that. <laughs> You're going to sew it together? And I'm going to sew it together instead of try to put it in those little teeny tiny pieces. So this is sort of your auditioning of it. My, yes. Okay. I'm slow because this, <laughs> this kind of um, scared me a little bit because it looks random to me and I'm not random and... Robin doesn't do random. I don't do random. <laughs> so I will have it done sooner than later, but um, all right. that's how I'm doing it. Good deal. Thanks. Next. Um, okay. Gwen. So I did the puppy dog, Emerson, and that particular pattern has you build your character on pattern ease and it's a cheap product it's only 269 a yard and so i had drawn emerson on the pattern ease and then you build on the pattern ease now they do go ahead and have you lay certain background pieces down so that it's I'll completely covered um, and she has you look at the face and there's different pieces for the ears and parts of his face, and then you just cover that up as much as you'd like. Then you cut out Emerson and put him on your fabric, and they suggested using fabric fuse glue, which I did yesterday, and it's a permanent glue once it's pressed, and then you leave it set four to six hours, and then it's ready to go. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about, since Suzanne's not here this morning, let's just talk a little bit about this pattern that has multiple 
ideas so in it. she made... Because it's smaller. It's right next to Emerson up there. It's, well, it's a lot like Mary's, I think, in that... Right. They build the background... Very, very much the same as Emerson, but Emer but the rooster has been created in the same design technique as what uh, Gwen made Emerson. And then uh, I think the one big difference, and the same thing I found out with my larger uh, Birch Street project, is the fact that I found it much easier. I don't want to go against the way the direction said to do it, but I would highly recommend building the background and then building on to that, because otherwise you have to pull everything back after you. It's so much fun to start with cutting out your flowers and, and making your trees, but then you have to pull that all back up. So I think um, Suzanne said the same thing with her rooster, uh, that her rooster was designed and then built the the background was built behind that. Can you show that. us some of the elements? I think you have those in front of you. you I, I do, I do. And I, we haven't talked much about this team of seeing yeah, let's true talk about that. light. Mm -hmm. And we carry both widths. We carry the 24 inch width and we carry the, carry the 12 inch. We price compared, they're almost identical price per inch, I guess if you when we sell by the yard. So either one, I preferred working with the, the narrower one because I have a lot of the smaller projects. I did not just take a whole big sheet and put it on the back of a large piece of fabric. I made, I kind of drew my design, which that's a little tricky too, is that you have to make sure you either reverse your pattern or you have to pull, pull it back, draw in kind of in a reverse and then press it back down and cut, which is what I did a lot. And now when you do the motifs, you just go ahead and at that point, I did probably a fat eighth, depending upon the design that you wanted to be able to cut. And it is a family project. My granddaughters and my daughter were all here for spring break. And I think my husband looked at one this morning, he goes, now that's the one I cut. So <laughs> include the whole, and particularly now with a lot of children that are home, uh, not in school, wonderful idea to take these smaller ones. Gwen talked about the smaller projects here. And I would recommend for them definitely uh, starting with the smaller project on doing that. But with the houses, I still have to add a lot of accents and you, it kind of looks naked now, but when you start adding, if you look at um, Kirsten's over here, her name is Cor Coral, Cor the owl. Coral, the, Cora the Owl. And when you start embellishing it, and I think Kristen's gonna, Kirsten's gonna talk a little bit about that, and uh, it, it'll really make it all come together when you start adding those little accents in there. First, I wanted to, yep. I'm sorry, I wanted yeah. to touch on, you said pull it back. Right. And I was working with my daughter this weekend and she was a bit confused about that. And I just, you know, talk about seeing the same. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm borrowing fine. Robin's, <laughs> it's not for this project, but for instance, if I wanted to use this purple for his nose, you have to peel back the fabric which I'm not going to do, but you peel back the fabric from the uh, steamer seam. So then there's no fabric, it's just the steamer seam paper and you draw that shape, put the fabric back down and then you can cut the shape exactly the way you need it to cut. And the fusible is actually adhered to your fabric right. side. So this is just paper. It'll just be a layer of the paper that you are actually, and that gives you the automatic reverse without, without having to reverse the pattern. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. there's a lot of cutting that happens. <laughs> so I wanna continue on the reverse. On mine, I had to use the 24 inch because I had this long tree section and the pattern actually says to reverse the pattern onto a window, which I did on my sliding glass door. And then I trace it on to my, um, fusible steam seam and then you have to cut it out in chunks and then I just used all the excess steam seam to start creating everything else. I also traced my owl and tail and then built onto that so it's actually double fusible so you have like a fusible like the fusible on the back of your owl and then you're building with your fusible on, with your items mm. and so it's double but it made it a lot easier for me. I'm not a big um read every inch of your pattern. Person. 
I like to wing it when I think it's easier. So that's how I built that one. I also didn't, like on Gwen's, hers is uh, cut out exactly pretty much to what the dog is. There are some pieces I liked too much. I didn't want to cut them like that. And so I left it wider. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, well, like here, this is cut out of a feather and it's smooth in the pattern. Well, I didn't want to do that. So I left it or here it's harder to tell, but there are some cool leaves coming out of this floral print. So I left those. Um, but in saying all that, I used these scissors. These are just a regular eight inch uh, fabric scissor. And I don't even know, maybe 20 minutes in right here on my thumb, I started getting a lovely blister. <laughs> I'm not at the shop, I'm at home. So I put a Band-Aid over that and I went for a while more and then I stopped. And that's how I spent three days cutting stuff out. When if you'd use what it calls for, um, which are the K, or sorry, Karen K Buckley scissors. They are a size medium. This I used at the very last day and it was perfect. See the difference in size. <laughs> Makes so a huge difference. They're, they're lovely. Huge difference. Your regular. Plus, this is a serrated edge which then eliminates the uh, raveling that you get on your edges. Yeah, and you can get a lot closer to your, your fine cuts in here, um, where I also did these little tiny wing ding pieces. I did those with these. Um, also, this has, if you can tell, this edging in here, which what was rubbing on my finger, versus there is none in they're, these. They're wonderful scissors. So, wonderful. if you're going to do this, I would get these. <laughs> now I've learned my lesson. <laughs> And the other thing I think we need to mention, uh, Kirsten's is actually been quilted here in the shop. Yes. So they're little one inch, um, I can't remember what the pattern's called, but they're little leaves, which is actually very close to what the pattern had in the original. And Rita just whipped that on out. So you can do one of these, bring it in, and also um, get these little tiny leaves or something else Wind similar. Dings. Wind Wind dings. Dings. Wing dings, that's it. So. And then I take it that Suzanne? Suzanne quilted hers. Yes. She quilted hers. And another thing I don't know if we really made clear, this whole thing here is actually created on a flat sheet of the pattern ease. So you're actually building, I did it on my design wall at home um, and then created it all. And then ironed as much of it I could down to hold it down basically. It still has a lot to add to. I will say with kids being stuck at home, because I do have those, <laughs> mm -hmm. they're not as young, but if you have young ones, this is a great idea. So maybe you're doing a 30 or 45 minute art hour. I've seen a lot of people out there starting to plan their day because you're going to have to do school at home somehow. They could be cutting out little pieces for that 45 minutes and you could slowly be building this for your house that's created by all your children and then they have something to look forward to or say, hey, I cut that or I cut this or or whatever in this crazy time. So I would suggest doing a big one slowly over time because you have nine weeks of school left. <laughs> and they can actually use a coloring book. It could be yeah. a unicorn. Yeah. There's a unicorn yeah. pattern. Also, um, talk about these background fabrics okay. that you all put together. Go ahead, Alrighty. One of the most difficult parts we thought was choosing your background. And actually I've changed my background twice now as I developed it and went along and, and doing that. So as we went through the store, we just gathered background fabrics and we didn't realize how many of them we actually do have. So we've put together a couple of packets. We have fat quarter packets, which we have four fat quarters and none of them are alike. They're all different. Four fat quarters for $13.95. And then we also did eight fat eights and they, I believe are $14.95. So we've already done a big part of your work for you in, in helping you get that creation started in the back. And then go through your fabric stash at home. <laughs> and you, I think you all saw the picture of my sewing room. If you haven't, go check out our Facebook page. It still looks like that right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we hope we have inspired you. We have a lot of different Laura Heine patterns, some little tiny ones some big ones, some multiple ones. Um, they're available or the collage book talks about how you can do your own. If you wanna do that, start with your own um, simple design. Um, the other big feature of Schoolhouse, um, it's, it was designed and we've always done it as a mini shop hop. So we're not um, particularly encouraging you to do that this weekend. We've extended the shop hop to 
10 days. So it's now through next Saturday, Knockwood, that we're able to continue that. So the other three shops um, will have those listed in the description of the YouTube video. But when you go to each of the, of, of the shops, we each have a packet that includes four fat quarters of Moda Grunge. So this is our packet. And then each shop has done a different pattern um, using the 16 different grunge fat quarters and then adding some fabric. So we added um, something from the Kay Fawcett collection from Free Spirit, and these are Moda Grunge. And the little bit different thing we're doing this year because we aren't doing um, a, t a, a report card, there are no grading, there's no classes, no grading, it's all recess. <laughs> so um, we are including the pattern, the quilt pattern with the bundle of fat quarters. Um, and it's all specially priced at just $9.99, regularly $13, but it's $9.99 for the next 10 days. So anyway. And we're ready to start mailing today. Yes, so and we will mail. if you don't want to come in today, we, we will mail. We'll mail any of this. So this, um, I think we, uh, we said we can mail this. Um, for, I think it's $13.95 for the, um, includes the postage on these. This is the bundle of, um, the extra fabric you need for this and the binding if you choose to do that. So anyway, we hope that you've enjoyed this. We hope you, um, have some questions and you can always, um, chat with us on social media. You can email me, you can phone the store and, um, we also, we are open, and so we um, will welcome those who come into the store. We're just going to try to keep our social distancing um, at the same time. It's not social distancing, it's physical distancing. We want to be social, but we can do that at six, eight, ten feet apart. We're, we got loud voices. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.